Welcome to the University of Alabama to Coleman Coliseum Gymnastics Locker Room with Sarah Patterson. I'm Tom Roberts. And Sarah, a great Friday night at Coleman Coliseum, a sellout crowd of 15,162 must have been electric. Well, it was. It was very exciting. And, and I think more than anything else, um, you know, to have that many people support such a great cause yeah. our opening home event and I think the ladies just absolutely loved it and I think they performed that way as well let's look at some of the atmosphere at Coleman Coliseum this past Friday evening better than 15,000 people there it was packed to the rafters and as you say you promoted breast cancer awareness and one way you promoted it was by presenting a very big check on behalf of the University of Tuscaloosa Toyota and the DCH Foundation. Well, I think that was probably the most exciting thing of the evening for me personally, because we started this fund last year uh, mm -hmm. with our Meet Against Auburn, and over the course of the year, the donations and certainly the DCH Foundation charity golf event uh, that raid, uh, raised almost all the proceeds for this, uh, I think to know now that uh, disadvantaged women in West Alabama can go to DCH if they, if they feel they have a problem and they have an opportunity to uh, seek treatment or seek diagnostic help, I think that more than anything makes all this work over the last year worthwhile. It makes it worthwhile. It was a wonderful evening, great crowd, and a pretty darn good performance by the Crimson Tide too. Good enough to move Bama up to number three in the country this week. We'll take a look at Bama in action when we come back on the Sarah Patterson Show. Every day. Welcome back to the Sarah Patterson Show. And Sarah, the huge crowd, how did it affect your ladies? I would think it got them excited. I thought the most telling comment was in the post-meet interview when Ashley Miles told the reporters that she was trying to tell the freshmen all what it was going to feel like and how much they were going to enjoy it. And then she said when she came out of the portal yeah. and she saw all those people as she was being in introduced, she said, I felt like a freshman all over again. So I think not only from our most experienced and veteran national champion down to, you know, uh, our eight freshmen who had never been in never. front of a crowd like that, I think everyone was excitement excited I think they were a little nervous of and it, and I think it showed on both teams um, but we settled in at, you know it, I think that the hardest thing for both teams was it, it showed up a little bit on the balance beam and I, I think you know even if they didn't fall I could tell that everybody was up there shaking just a little for bit sure. from both teams mm -hmm. just because the fact that you have 15,000 people focused on you on a four inch balance beam well, let's take a look at the Crimson Tide in action. Headed toward a 195.775. Bama opened on the vault, and here's Dana Folletti. Well, this is Dana's second meet vaulting, and she does a nice Labian, uh, Arabian layout, and uh, that was the best vault. It was improved over Penn State. Ashley O'Neill comes back with a big pike front half, a little controlled step there. I'd like to see her tighten up on the front side of the horse just a little bit. Brittany McGee comes in here with a layout your chinko full twist, nice and high, and just a little step on the landing, but her, she really has a great distance and height. And then Ashley Miles with a 9 9. Ashley was great. As you see, that's perfect. Just a little bounce on the landing. She just ha hasn't quite gotten the control of it yet. I got the impression from looking at your scores, maybe the judges were a little tighter on the vault than maybe they were in the first couple of weeks. Well, I, I think you can see their vaults are getting better. They're a little bit okay. bigger, but I think where they're taking their deductions is on the landings. Uh, I think we have to work on that, and that just comes with experience. A little bit over 49 on the vault. Let's see the Crimson Tide in action on the bars. Very good night for Bama on this event. Courtney Priest starting us with a 975. Courtney has great lines here. Nice full twist into her Tkachev. Now she's going to straddle back to a handstand on the low bar, and she's nice in handstand position, and that's actually what you want. And you look up there, and you see in those corners that all yeah. those corners are full. I think that was exciting. A toe on toe off handstand, and she gets ready for her dismount, E level dismount. A little hop on the landing, um, not quite as controlled as you'd like, but a good routine by Courtney. Another freshman, Cassie Martin, and it seems to me that Cassie gets a little better every time out. Well, she did. In the first two meets, Cassie struggled. Uh, I mean, she missed uh, on her release move in the first meet and then missed uh, right here on her handstand in the second meet. And uh, she did, worked really hard in the inter-squad. Her lines are so clean. And I think you can see how excited she was. Right there, big smiles. She knew that she had come back and made that routine. And Melanie Vanville follows with a 9.85. 
Melanie led us off on vault and did a great job. And mm -hmm. then this was uh, her, there she goes, giant, with a full twist into a tacacha, oh, straddle back to a handstand, right to the handstand on the low bar. And then she's gonna get ready and she does a beautiful double layout dismount. Nice, nice height and, do, and just really nice and clean and nails the landing. You can tell she knows where those landings are. She was happy. And then Dana Folletti goes to the bars at 9825 for Dana. And this was a much better routine for Dana. She does a big release move there, her ginger, and nice to the handstand on the high bar, uh, another handstand on the low bar. Dana had a few problems uh, at Penn State, uh, just either over going over on her handstands or, mm -hmm. or under on her handstands, and I thought she made a much better improvement, just a little check on her landing there. It was a good routine for Dana. And then Taryn Humphrey leads the team with a 9-9-0. Taryn's routine right now is very clean, and she's very confident of it. Uh, we do have more to put in her routine, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully as we... Uh, get her back on some of the other events. Uh, we're just we're running out of time in practice right now, so we're we're going with the 9-9 bar routine yeah. that's a little shorter until we we get her where we need her to be. It's just a little check on landing. She came off a little early on her dismount. A 9-9 there. Last week we talked a little bit about Marie Bayer having the toe problem. I noticed Rachel De La Husse is walking around with her arm in a sling. She's been injured early in the season. Well, Rachel's injury is a little bit different. It's something she's had for a long time, and it's uh, we've gone to a several different specialists, and mm. she has a problem with a bone inside her hand My that... It is basically kind of uh, of dying, and we just need to um, decide exactly what to do. Uh, I don't feel like Rachel will compete this year on balance beam. I think we're going to just opt to just make sure that we don't do anything to aggravate that. Certainly and not. Uh, we've been to New Orleans. We've been we're going to Birmingham. So we we're just kind of keeping our options open and let Rachel get started this semester, and then uh, get her in classes, and then see exactly what we have to do. Well, that certainly makes using all the freshmen more important at this point, doesn't it? Well, it does, and, and we knew that Rachel would just have the option to do one event for us this year, but you hate to see anyone end mm -hmm. their senior year that way, but also, too, I think it's one of these decisions that we have to really make sure that we do the right thing for Rachel, because there's a, a hopefully a future as a doctor or a surgeon, and, uh, you know, she's going to need that risk later on in her life. Well, the Crimson Tide went third to the balance beam, and we're going to take a look at that when we come back on the Sarah Patterson Show. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sarah Patterson Show. We're looking at Bama in action against Florida, a sellout crowd of 15,162. And as you said, at the start of a show, the balance beam is where I think the crowd does not help you at all, does it? Well, I think the ladies were um, a little bit nervous. Certainly. And not only from our team, but also from Florida. And this is our first meet where we've been in an environment where uh, the focus is solely on one athlete. And I That's think true. we've been in a four-ring circus mm -hmm. at the Super Six. We've been in a three-ring circus up at Penn State. And this is the first meet where all the focus is on one athlete performing. And I think any time for your first time in your career you step up there in front of 15,000 people, it's a little bit daunting. It would have been daunting in front of 10,000 people. So uh, I think for this young team, this is an area where we're really going to have to grow. Well, let's look at this young Alabama team on the beam. And we start with Brittany McGee. We'll hear from Brittany a little later in the show. She gets you going with a 9775. But I think Brittany just coming into school here in January I think she has done an amazing job. She is a natural balance beam worker. I think she's going to be an awesome leadoff worker for us. She was just a little off there, mm -hmm. and uh, but a good balance check. She does a that was a one arm back handspring into a layout. Now she does another front aerial, which is a D level move. Her her routine is packed full of difficulty. A full turn with her leg above horizontal that also gives her bonus. She seems very active on the beam. She has a great style, great leap series there. I, I can tell you she certainly, her family came from uh, Dallas, Texas. They were here and, and uh, they really enjoyed the competition. A great punch front. And she's gonna get ready for her dismount. It's a round off, double back, a nice high level dismount. Just a little tiny step on landing, but that's a great lead-off routine, other than the one bobble that she had there on the first part. 
it was a good routine. And another freshman, Ashley O'Neill, getting a 9-8. I think Ashley's coming a long way. I think she's doing much better, and I think she likes being out here in competition. She was, I can tell you, she's a great competitor because she was very nervous before she got up for balance beam. I could see it in her eyes. A back handspring to a layout. Step out, just opened her hips just a little bit. See that great crowd up there. And there's a little music playing in the background, but all the focus right now is on Ashley O'Neill. Everybody Switch in pink. Uh, yeah, you look up there and you just see all the pink. It was just so exciting. The required full turn. Girls are required to do. Ashley did quite well in school this year. She um, in first semester she had a 3.4 grade point average. Nice punch front. We'll check on her landing there. I was talking with a fan yesterday who was talking about how your your team represents the best when it comes to academics and to athletics, the combination. Well, it, a lot of people have said that, and I, I can tell you today, that's a great dismount, double front, that's an E-level dismount, that's a, that's a wonderful level of dismount. Um, I can tell you that uh, I received a wonderful email from Dr. Patera, the chancellor of our system, and uh, he, it just, he is so encouraging to me, and every time when I, I don't get to look up in the crowd much, but uh, I do always look up at Section D. My family is there, and I take one minute, and I look up there, and every time when I see Dr. Patera and his wife, Olivia, there, I'm, I'm just always so proud to represent the university. Taryn did a great tumbling series there for us. That was a full twisting back handspring to a back handspring layout step out. Gives her all kinds of bonus. Punch front now. She's a little, just a little off on yeah. her landing there. And the, the judge also took a deduction because the punch front was a little lower. If you, if you compared her punch front to Ashley O'Neill's, you could see the difference in the, in the landing. Oh, okay. And that would help you understand that the execution of it. Could help you understand why she gets a 9675 instead of the usual 9885 that uh, we ordinarily see from Terry. And then you, you kind of see it in the background as you're, they're showing the, the opposite side there. You see a lot of the people from DCH that were here helping celebrate this event with us. It was great. It was a great night, and Bama closed it out on the floor exercise. We'll go there when we come back on the Sarah Patterson Show. This year. On Drive for the Cure night to promote breast cancer awareness, Bama Beach, Florida at uh, Coleman Coliseum. Sarah, your ladies went to the floor exercise and some incredible scores there. Well, they did do a great job, and I told them going into that event that we, we needed to just get the crowd, pull them mm -hmm. into it, uh, use their energy and enthusiasm, smile, and just really work on their landings, and that if we did that, then we could walk away with a victory. And, and certainly, uh, when they announce a sellout crowd, oh, yeah. you, you want to make sure that you go out and, and that you've won and done your job for the fans. Well, the Tide does that on the floor exercise. Let's go there and start Start with Tara and Humphrey, a 9825, the Crimson Tide. This is Taryn's first pass. It's a two and a half punch front. So it's a D level skill into an A. And she takes it up. She struggled with it a little bit uh, on her pass. And we, we actually, it was her second pass, and we actually switched it to the first pass to, to get it out of the way early. And then she comes back with a double pike. It's another D level pass. Well, I noticed in watching the U.S. Figure Skating Championships over the weekend that the judges reward difficulty late in a routine. Is that the case in gymnastics as well? It is true. Well? Um, you will take a deduction for what's what they call a downhill deduction. If you start with a D or an E-level tumbling pass and you end with a C, okay. uh, anything less than a C, there's an automatic deduction. But you could also, you know, if, if the key would be to have Ds or Es in all your passes yeah. if you could. Or if you start with a D or an E and you end with a D or an E, um, you will see it's very difficult to end with an E. Uh, very difficult. But uh, if, if we get that double back last pass, Taryn is going to end her floor routine here with a D, a straight two and a half. And uh, this is something she's working on. We're going to have to go one and a half through to a two and a half, but right now it's strictly just a two and a half. She just gives in a little mm -hmm. bit on the landing. She had completed it. But a much better routine than she had done at Penn State. A couple of great performances by Bama freshman Melanie Banville, a 9875. Well, Melanie starts off with an E level tumbling pass. This is a, a double pike with a full twist. Look at that. Very nice. Now, Melanie has a, a, a great presence on floor. 
She does a triple turn. She comes out of it just a little bit, so that's a little bit of a deduction there. The judge would have to take that, but it is a D-level dance move. Now she's going to come back with another D pass. She does a two and a half to a punch front. Amazing. So Melanie will have an E or a D in all three of her tumbling passes. Shows you why she was an Olympian, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And she, she has a great presence with the crowd as well. And, you know, this is the first time that the, the crowd has gotten to see half of our exactly. team. Exactly. I know that it had to be a part of the excitement, too, just seeing all these freshmen in action. I think they were very excited. As you can see, I'm, I'm right there. I'm trying to encourage her. I'm trying to make sure that she breathes. Because she's got a big D-level pass, last pass. Double pike. Just a li little short on the landing, not bad. She pulls it out and see she's excited. And then Britt McGee, another 9875 for a freshman. Brittany does what we call a half in, half out. A little short on her landing, just a little just kicked her legs back just a little bit. A nice good pass. Now, now, Brittany really enjoyed the crowd, and all of a sudden, this little personality came out on floor exercise that has not emerged really? before or in practice, and uh, it's great. I love that, and, and that's something we're very excited to have. She has two whip backs into a double pike, a D-level pass, but it also takes a lot of energy out of you. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're, that's something we, we told Brittany, we just got to work on in practice, make sure she puts the same energy into it in practice as she does in competition. In uh, just a few minutes, we'll talk with Brittany about her floor routine. She's one of those who's got the bubbly personality. She does. She has a great personality. And this is a front double full last pass. Very difficult pass. And she lands it exceptionally well. She's a great addition to our squad. And then the highlight of the evening, I think, as far as Ashley Miles, the 15,162 fans, and I would dare say even Sarah Patterson. This is a great routine for Ashley. This is a great routine. This is Ashley Miles, I know. Uh, everybody just, you know, was thrilled to, to see her out there. She did a great job, and they were very, um, very excited to to perform at this level. Oh, sure. Uh, she, she struggled a little bit at Penn State. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, st just step back a little bit on her landings and um, still a great routine, but this one, I just told her before she went out on the floor exercise to make sure that she enjoyed it and had lots of fun, and I think she did. You can see right here, she's, she's drawing that audience in. Oh, yeah. It's a 9.95 for Ashley Miles. I mean, it's, it's a routine where you can't help but just smile as you watch I know, she does her famous little seat uh -huh. drop there that uh, one time we took it out of her routine and we had so many oh, complaints from the fans at home, they wanted to see her back in it. Now she's round up back handspring, double pike, solid landing, last pass, great job, D-level skill. You can see how excited she is, and her teammates as well. As everybody should be. We're going to come back and uh, wrap things up, talk to Brittany McGee in just a moment here on the Sarah Patterson Show. At the buzzer for the win. Talk about your routine on the floor. What what parts of it do you like? What parts of it uh, do you think you'll improve on as the season goes along? Um, hopefully, I'll improve a little bit on tumbling because um, this is the beginning of the season, and hopefully, I can upgrade for the end. And I kind of just enjoy my whole routine, the dance and stuff. I have to get used to smiling more. It's a little more easygoing than I'm used to. Has that been one of the the biggest changes the transition from high school to college for you? A little bit. Um, I was very, I'm kind of a little bit of a perfectionist, so it's kind of hard to let things go a little bit more. You know, it says, like, it doesn't have to be perfect. We can get it tomorrow. I'm not going to keep you here like, like you have before. And so it just takes a little getting used to. I'm starting to enjoy it more. Brittany and her fellow freshmen, your team head to Auburn this week. Uh, the Tigers 
pretty good this year? Well, they are good, and uh, they were only a point or so behind us at the Super Six. So, uh, you know, every time we go to Auburn, it's just, it's always difficult for me because it's been 20, 26 years, 27 yeah. years since we've lost to them. And um, I, I know that they have a good program, and we're going to have to be at our best to do well. Well, the Crimson Tide at Auburn this weekend. Hope you'll be there and be back with us next week for the Sarah Patterson Show.